Well, findings from a new groundwater quality investigation press release from Mammoth Community Water District states confirms that ORMAT Technologies' existing geothermal operation and proposed ex expansion project known as Casa Diablo 4 presents an unnecessary existential threat to Mammoth Lakes and the community's main and most reliable public water supply. Now said Pat Hayes, general manager of the Mammoth Community Water District, we are charged with protecting our region's precious water supply and have repeatedly asked ORMAT to partner with us to ensure our water supply is not impacted by ORMAT's geothermal pumping. Despite sound science and expert recommendation, ORMAT continues to place the community's groundwater at unnecessary risk. If the company were truly committed to clean energy and sustainable practices, it would implement the necessary safeguards to preserve and protect our community's groundwater." End quote. Now, Mammoth Community Water District commissioned Wildermuth Environmental Incorporate, Incorporated described as a respected, highly specialized water resources consulting firm to analyze groundwater monitoring data collected by the experts at the United States Geological Survey, the sole science agency for the U.S. Department of the Interior. Now, Wittermuth's scientific analysis and conclusions demonstrate clear evidence, the press release states, that geothermal pr fluids are present in Mammoth's groundwater basin confirming and including that fractured rock, rock allows water, heat, and other elements to travel between Mammoth's groundwater basin and ORMAT's geothermal reservoir. Now, the conclusion of no impacts to Mammoth's groundwater basin in the environmental review of ORMAT's geothermal expansion project was based, the press release notes, on a fundamentally flawed assumption that an impermeable barrier prevents ORMAT's geothermal reservoir from mixing with Mammoth Community's groundwater. Now, the connection between Mammoth's groundwater and ORMAT's geothermal reservoir places the community's drinking water at risk of contamination or depletion, and the threat is imminent. ORMAT's Casa Diablo 4 project, the press release says, will expand geothermal pumping closer to Mammoth's groundwater wells, placing new stresses on the region's complex, interconnected hydraulic system. Now, without necessary safeguards, increased geothermal pumping from ORMAT's Casa Diablo 4 pro project could cause, the press release notes, irreversible groundwater contamination and depletion of the community water supply. Now, said Mammoth Community Water District Board President Thomas Smith, Mammoth's tourism industry is the economic heart of our region. My colleagues and I serve the families, employees, and business owners, large and small, who are keeping the beat, and we simply cannot allow ORMAT to leave them high and dry. While I am a strong supporter of bringing clean energy to our state, energy cannot be considered clean if it comes at the cost of clean water supplies that serve our communities. That full news release and wilderness report is posted on our website, sierrawave.net. Well, Deb Murphy filed this report for Sierra Wave Media. The first few hours of last Wednesday's technical group meeting continued the verbal wrestling match between Inyo County and the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power over a proposed two-month pumping test on Five Bridges Well 385. Then came the question of the department providing water to three landfill sites as a new enhancement mitigation project. Inyo County has begun condemnation proceedings on the sites, an action that drew a lawsuit from the city. The condemnation includes water rights. LADWP raised the possibility of the new EM project at the last tech group meeting, but a suggestion that wasn't immediately embraced by Inyo County's water department. Now, the eight-page description of the possible project was handed out at the meeting at the as the department's attorney, Dave Edwards, began the discussion. Now, apparently, in an attempt to email the document earlier last Tuesday morning, that failed. Edwards admitted that the long-term water agreement was ambiguous on the topic of adding EMs, bringing the issue to the TEP group seemed to be a courtesy. Then Inyo County CAO Kevin Caruncio jumped into the discussion, saying this isn't mitigation as he leafed through the document. But where's the enhancement? All I see are a couple of bullets. 
Edwards' response. $100,000 for fencing, reliable water for the sites, and a replacement well at the Bishop site. One issue with landfill water as an EM project is the fact that LADWP has historically pulled back on EM during low runoff years. We're not opening the EM door, Edwards said in reference to a remark made by Caruncio when the topic was broached last month. But Caruncio still blew the hinges off the door, running through a list of possible projects. An independent source of water for the Lone Pine FFA farm, the Bartell Parcel and Big Pine, golf courses, county parks and campgrounds, Mono County Ranch lessees get a water guarantee, the Veterans Path and Big Pine, completion of the bike to school path in Bishop, open the Hayway Reservoir to the public, the Owens Water Trail, the County Farm in Big Pine, and an increase from three to five acre feet for Inyo reservations. That was all from Kevin Caruncio. We will note Deb's full story is posted on our website, sierrawave.net. Also, a special meeting of the technical group was called for today to review the five bridges mitigation. Deb Murphy also filed this story. Last Wednesday morning on the lawn in front of Bishop Union High School, senior Jordan Coast held a banner listing the names and ages of the victims of the school shooting in Parkland, Florida. At the bottom of the list, Coast wrote, enough. The same sentiments were reflected at a similar gathering at Bishop City Park a month after the last in a too long list of students and teachers who died too young. Now, the main topic at both events wasn't gun control, but how to guarantee that Parkland would be the last mass school shooting. We came out for the students, Co said, and to look for the solutions. The consensus was everyone was scared, and Co said that's not okay. We were honoring the lives lost, he said in a phone interview. He called the walkout positive at the same time, acknowledging that was an odd word to use for a sad event. You have to stand tall, Co said. You have to listen and hope others listen back. Mental health was a topic at both the school and the park. How do you identify students so alienated they turn to violence? A woman near tears at Bishop City Park thought metal, de metal detectors were part of the solution. Now, the school walkout is the first of a national movement. Marches were also scheduled for this Saturday and again on Friday, April 20th. That would be the 19th anniversary of the Columbine shooting that took 13 lives. Bishop Union High School students participating in Wednesday's walkout weren't even boring then. Then the shooting at Virginia Tech, April 16th, 2007, 33 dead. Sandy Hook, December 14th, 2012, 26 dead. A community college in Roseburg, Oregon, October 1st, 2015, 10 dead. And that's just the school shootings. That's not from Deb's story. That's from me. Now, while schools nationwide have incorporated additional safety measures, to coast, it seems, nothing has been done. Kids are still dying, he said. Things get drawn out for a while, but then they die down when something else comes along. Now, with the strong activism of the Parkland students, Coast hope it's time that it will be different. We will have to face the fear with courage and intellect, he said. We'll be back with more news.